Today is April the 23rd. Today, we'll read Psalms 49 to 51. As we read through the Bible in a year, Sundays are dedicated to the book of Psalms. Psalm 49 and 50 are both different. 49 is a wisdom psalm. You can read there, see how much it looks like the book of Proverbs. Psalm 50 is a liturgical psalm in which Israel sings of the benefits of the covenant. Psalm 51 is a song of lament but it's a very specialized one. It's called a penitential psalm. Here, according to the title, David has just been found out what he did to Bathsheba and Uriah. And so David comes to God and he confesses his sin and asks for forgiveness. He makes this psalm a public confession so all Israel knows. Now, I've always been bothered by verse 4. David starts and says, against you, you alone have I sinned. Well, what about Bathsheba, whom David practically raped? What about Uriah, whom David murdered? Didn't he sin against them as well? Well, I looked up the word you alone. And what I found is that the word alone here is very particular. It only occurs about 30 times in the Old Testament. About two-thirds of the time, it's translated alone. But 10 of those times, it's translated in addition to. It's not saying that David sinned only against God. He's saying In addition to what I've done to Bathsheba and Uriah, I've sinned against you. In fact, from the tone of the psalm, it seems like David is saying against you, and especially against you, I've sinned. Yes, I did horrible things to Bathsheba. Yes, I did horrible things to Uriah. But my true sin here, Lord, is against you. You wanted better of me, and I've failed you. Psalm 49 through 51, New Living Translation, Psalm 49. For the choir director, a psalm of the descendants of Korah. Listen to this, all you people. Pay attention, everyone in the world. High and low, rich and poor, listen. For my words are wise, my thoughts are filled with insight. I listen carefully to the many proverbs and solve riddles with inspiration from a harp. Why should I fear when trouble comes, when enemies surround me? They trust their wealth and boast of great riches, yet they cannot redeem themselves from death by paying a ransom to God. Redemption does not come so easily, for no one can ever pay enough to live forever and never see the grave. Those who are wise must finally die, just like the foolish and senseless, leaving their wealth behind. The grave is their eternal home, where they will stay forever. They may name their estates after themselves, but their fame will not last. They will die just like animals. This is the fate of fools, though they are remembered as being wise. Like sheep, they are led to the grave, where their death will be their shepherd. In the morning, the godly will rule over them. Their bodies will rot in their grave, far from the grand estates. But as for me, God will redeem my life. He will snatch me from the power of the grave. So don't be dismayed when the wicked grow rich and their homes become even more splendid. For when they die, they take nothing with them. Their wealth will not follow them into the grave. In this life, they consider themselves fortunate and are applauded for their success. But they will die like all before them and never again see the light of day. People who boast of their wealth don't understand. They will die just like animals. Psalm 50, a psalm of Asaphah. The Lord, the Mighty One, is God, and He has spoken. He has summoned all humanity from where the sun rises to where it sets. 
From Mount Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines in glorious radiance. Our God approaches, and He is not silent. Fire devours everything in His way, and a great storm rages around Him. He calls on the heavens above and earth below to witness the judgment of His people. Bring my faithful people to me, those who made a covenant with me by giving sacrifices. Then let the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself will be the judge. O my people, listen as I speak. Hear my charges against you. O Israel, I am God, your God. I have no complaint about your sacrifices or burnt offerings you consistently offer, but I do not need the bulls from your barns or goats from your pens, for all the animals of the forest are mine, and I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains, and all the animals of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for all the world is mine and everything in it. I do not eat the meat of bulls, I do not drink the blood of goats. Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God, and keep the vows you made to the Most High. Then call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. But God says to the wicked, Why bother reciting my decrees and pretending to obey my covenant? For you refuse my discipline and treat my words like trash. When you see thieves, you approve of them, and you spend your time with adulterers. Your mouth is filled with wickedness, and your tongue is full of lies. You sit around and slander your brother, your own mother's son. While you did all this, I remained silent, and you thought I didn't care. But now I will rebuke you, listing all my charges against you. Repent, all you who forget me, or I will tear you apart, and no one will help you. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. Psalm 51 For the choir director, a psalm of David regarding the time Nathan the prophet came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sin. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone I have sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart. O God, look with favor on Zion and help her. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit. With burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, the bulls will again be sacrificed on your altar. Scripture reading by Emily Herrera. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com as we start the week tomorrow, we'll be finishing up the book of 1 Samuel.